Well, the U.S. is one of only four countries in the world with a drinking age as high as 21. The other three are Indonesia, Mongolia, and Palau. I would encourage someone to, to refrain from alcohol use until they turn 21. Um, there are lots of things that people can do that don't involve alcohol. 18, 19, 20-year-olds are going to drink. There's just no getting around it. So puking, are you guys on board? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in Menominee, Wisconsin at UW Stout to get a first-hand look at the war on underage drinking. Menominee, Wisconsin is a little town on a lake about an hour east of the Twin Cities on I-94. People here enjoy hunting, fishing, eating deep-fried cheese curds, and drinking. In fact, the nice folks here in Wisconsin are more likely to binge drink than people anywhere else in the country. Menominee's population of 15,000 swells to 24,000 during the school year, and students who choose to attend Stout know exactly what they're getting into. They used to say, when in doubt, go to Stout, can't get in there, go to the It's kind of a party school. Uh, UW Stout has always been known as a, a place where people like to go out and have a good time at. In the late 1970s, Ron Fox attended Stout and worked as a bartender at The Flame, the bar he now owns. At that time, the drinking age again was 18. We had people in here all the time, uh, Tuesday through Saturday night. Stout is still clinging to its party school identity, but it hasn't been easy. Wisconsin raised its drinking age to 21 back in 1986. Well, obviously, the bar scene is, is uh, taking a big hit uh, financially. So where are all the underage students? Well, the underage drinking kids right now, they're all at a house party right now, having a good time. I mean, you know what's happening, you know what's going to happen, it happens practically every night. What this strict enforcement has done is it's, it's chased the people into drinking behind closed doors. John McCardell is a former chancellor of Middlebury College in Vermont and the president of an organization called Choose Responsibility. Uh, Choose Responsibility was founded in December of 2006 and our purpose is principally to engage the public in informed and dispassionate discussion uh, about the effects of the 21-year-old drinking age. Mary Beth Griffin is the interim executive director of the Orange County chapter of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. The mission of the Mothers Against Drunk Driving is to stop drunk driving, support victims of this violent crime, and prevent underage drinking. Uh, for better or worse, Mothers Against Drunk Driving recommended to a special presidential commission, uh, which in turn recommended to an otherwise strict states' rights president that the most uh, effective way to address the problem of drunken driving was to raise the drinking age from 18 to 21. Uh, the law says that the states may continue to set the age wherever they choose, but if they set it lower than 21, they forfeit 10 percent of their highway funds. Wisconsin and several other states held out for a while, but by 1988, all 50 states had raised the drinking age to 21. And more than 20 years later, Menominee police are still working hard to enforce the drinking age. That is one of their top priorities, is to combat 18, 19, 20-year-old kids to try and catch them with a beer in their hand. I get off work at around midnight and I drive through town. I'll run into eight to ten cops just on my way home driving through town. During things like homecoming and that type of thing, they actually get into uh, almost a Gestapo type mode, you know. The local cops, in cooperation with Arbor Place, a state-funded alcohol and drug treatment center, routinely organize compliance checks and sting operations resulting in fines for underage drinkers and bar owners. Some of those busted for underage drinking are persuaded to help the cops catch other underage drinkers. People who get underage tickets will end up making a deal with the DA and the police department to have these tickets disappear and they will uh, come in and, and uh, uh, act as an, uh, an informant, an underage informant. We asked the Menominee cops to discuss the challenge of enforcing the drinking age, but they wouldn't talk to us. And Arbor Place wouldn't return our calls. So we contacted Charles Sorensen, who has served as UW Stout's chancellor for more than 20 years. Chancellor Sorensen is very, very against underage drinking. Chancellor Sorensen wouldn't talk to us either. Arbor Place and the police department and uh, city council and people like that are not going to want to talk to you because for them, underage drinking has become a cash cow. The situation at Stout is hardly unique but frustrated chancellors at other universities around the country believe it's time for change. Uh, the Amethyst Initiative is a statement. 
uh, signed now by 135 presidents and chancellors of colleges and universities across the country. The situation on college campuses right now is that to observe the law requires presidents to say prohibition, just say no. But we also see how that's playing out and that frustration led these presidents to sign the Amethyst Initiative, which suggests that the 10% highway fund incentive uh, is a barrier to debate. So what are the main arguments in the national debate surrounding the drinking age? If, if on the one hand you're being told that you possess the maturity and the judgment and the sufficiently developed brain uh, to serve on a jury, to sign, on a, con to sign a contract, uh, to take out a loan. It's very hard then to ask, well, and then uh, and why can't I buy a beer? Well, because you lack maturity, judgment, and brain development. For people to be considered 18 at, or at an adult at 18, it really is a rights and responsibility issue. People starting to drink at 21 is a public health and safety issue. Um, there are, there's been research that's been done on adolescent brains, and we understand now what the introduction of alcohol can do to a young person's brain if introduced too early. The fact of the matter is that one of the principal researchers in that area is a member of the Board of Choose Responsibility. And he's the first to issue a cautionary reminder that this research is in its very early stages. It is based solely on laboratory animals. And it has concluded that the brain of an adolescent rat has not fully matured until approximately uh, the human age of 25. Drinking and driving crashes of teen teenagers between 15 and 20 years old have significantly been reduced. Uh, drunken driving fatalities have gone down in every age group over the last 25 years. Uh, that suggests that something other than the drinking age may also be responsible, say for automobiles, seat belts, airbags, uh, a greater enforcement, zero tolerance. One thing everyone involved in the debate can agree upon is that clandestine drinking puts too many young people at risk. Uh, and we are now in a situation where uh, by far the greater loss of life uh, of those under age 21 to alcohol is occurring off the highways. Illegal drinkers, I think, are more likely to binge because they find themselves in environments where uh, normal adult behavior is less likely to occur. If you're able to be 18 and walk into a bar, there you're going to be restricted to how much you can drink and how much you can do. Whereas if you're at a house party, you can go out of control and do whatever you want to do. You're not, not going to get, get kicked out or be cut off no. for drinking. Somebody's going to think that's sweet. When you have to hide something, that's when you get your problems, that when, that's when you get your troubles, that's when you get your friend who's drank too much, who really needs to go to the hospital, but they're underage, and so you, you don't want to do anything about it. Despite concerted efforts to enforce the drinking age in college towns like Menominee, 18 to 20 year olds continue to drink alcohol. Where do we go from here? So some of the things that I think that we can continue to do in order to help minimize the problem, help make our teens safer, help get them to their 21st birthday, is um, continued education, continued enforcement of underage drinking laws, and closing some of the loopholes in our existing underage drinking laws. Here's a good analogy. Think, uh, think about driving. What if on the day a young person reached legal driving age, whatever that age is, we tossed the keys to the car to that person and said, here are the keys, there's the vehicle. Um, good luck in figuring out how to operate this 2,000 pound machine capable of going 90 miles an hour. Uh, maybe your friends can help you. Uh, maybe you can go off into some dark secluded place and master its operation. Uh, I would love as your parent to be able to help you do this, but unfortunately, if I did, uh, you and I would both be arrested and our state would forfeit 10% of its highway funds. So mm, good luck, go figure it out. Well, that is precisely, silly as that sounds, that is precisely the attitude we take towards alcohol. Yeah, kids are gonna drink, but you know what, as long as they're walking, why is it a big deal? The old argument goes, if they're old enough to die for their country, then why not let them go out and have a couple of beers? So what do you think? Is it time that we took a fresh look at the drinking age? For Reason TV, I'm Paul Fine.